financial success. Today it's more about based on really having the long-term vision. My name's Max. I've been with the company for seven years. Uh, my story is real simple. I got involved because I was looking for a way to pay my way through college. I thought I wanted to be an attorney. The problem was tuition was $50,000 a year. I didn't have the money. My parents didn't have the money. So that led me to look into other opportunities where I could make that type of money. Obviously, legal opportunities at age 18 where I could make 50 grand a year. And that's when I got invited to take a look at ACN. Uh, initially, I wasn't sure if it would be something that would even work for me. I came to the meeting initially negative, but I did have a negative bank account, which is why I did kind of keep an open mind somewhat. And after the information, it made sense. And so here was the thing. I almost didn't join the company because I didn't have the 499. And, you know, I got recruited into ACN, but not really so much ACN, but into changing my future. And that's my topic today, recruiting. And so before I go into the topic, let me explain what really happened. The guy that was presenting the business that night said, well, Max, if you don't have 499 and you're at least 18 years of age, you need to ask yourself these two questions. Number one, how long have you been in that situation? And number two, what do you want to do to change your situation? Because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again and again and expecting something different. He says, for things to change, you have to change. And right there, that conversation hit me. And then he said this, Max, I guarantee you, you can find $4.99. I said, there's no way, man. I'm broke, busted, and disgusted. It's impossible. I'm poor. I don't have the money. He's like, Max, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to sell you my Bentley for $4.99. The catch is you need to come up with the money in the next two hours. And I said this, well, if it's for a Bentley, I'll be back in two minutes with the cash. No question. He says, okay, very good. So what you're saying, Max, is you value a car more than you value your future. You value a car more than you value your financial success. Max, you're worse than broke. You're poor. P-O-O-R, passing over opportunities repeatedly. He says, this car will never take you where you want to go. But through ACN and you apply your work ethic and follow our system, no question, you'll, go, you'll be able to go to any goal, any desire, you'll be able to accomplish through this business, no questions asked. Now, I didn't have the money, but after that conversation, I was kind of fired up. And so here's what I had to go do. I had to go find the money. I went to my mother. I said, Mom, I love you. You're the most beautiful mom ever. I heard about this incredible business called CNN. I'm going to get people who get people, and all of a sudden I'm going to be not poor anymore and make residual income, and I'm going to get rich. She says, you're grounded. Go to your room. She wasn't having, you know, that conversation. She's like, well, what am I going to do? I'm out of gas. No hope. And then all of a sudden, the light bulb went off. I remembered I had her credit card because that day I went to go get her gas, right, for her car, and I realized this must be a sign from God. I have, a credit, I have her credit card. So I was thinking she doesn't know how to use a computer, so that means I could sign up. OPM, other people's money, right, right? And I'd have 30 days to work to make the money back before she even would see the bill. Unfortunately, the credit card company called her. The minute I swiped it, she called me freaking out. I hung up a few times. No reception. I have a Metro PCS. You know, I'll call you back a little later. And the rest is history. And here's what ended up happening. I went to work with the business, not having any experience whatsoever in network marketing or business ownership or sales. Never even had a job before. But within 28 days, I made my first quick start bonus. That was the first time I'd ever seen a paycheck with my name and a comma on it at the same time. My mom kept the whole check. She charged me a lot of interest, as you can see. And the rest is history. But here's the moral of the story. I started ACN with no money, no credibility, no contacts. But I didn't use that as an excuse. See, my mentor always said, the choices you make will make you. And that day, when I came to that presentation and heard the conversation, I made a choice that I was going to change my life forever. And so my topic today is to talk about recruiting. And through recruiting, you'll be able to grow business, blow your business up. So going into 2012, you experience unprecedented success for you and your family. Are you okay with that? Yes or yes? So... Let's jump right into our conversation, recruiting. The best tool, everyone here in this room is always like, well, what is your secret to success? What is the best tool? Is it a DVD, the magazine? Is it a business assistant? Is it your store? Is it your business card? And what, what exactly is your secret to success? And here's what I tell everybody. Recruiting starts with you. You are your best tool. See, the question you need to ask yourself is, are you a person worth following? That's all recruiting is. If you are a leader, naturally people will want to follow you wherever you're going to go. And so the, the bottom line, guys, is you need to become that person that's attractive to other people. you got to become a person that's fired up. My mentor says if you're not fired up, you need to fire yourself. Too many of us are too casual with this business, but here's what I know. Excitement will, will attract people. People want to follow people that are going somewhere. Yes or yes? And above all else, 
Stop depending on all the cool things the company is doing to create a momentum in your business. You need to become the momentum. See, people buy you, then they buy into ACN. And the question is this, it's not if you believe in ACN. Because it's pretty easy to believe in ACN. When you look at our track record, look at what we've done, there's no question. It's easy to believe in ACN. The question is, do you believe in you? Do you believe that you are a person that can take people where they want to go? And I want to let you know, if I can do it, you can do it. No questions asked. But you got to be convicted. You got to believe. Because if you don't, no one else will. Are you guys with me so far? Now, it brings me to the next thing. Understanding your reason why. We've heard about the why this entire weekend. That is going to be your driving force to push you past all the challenges you're going to experience in this business. See, your vision has to be huge. It can't just be, I want to get a Bentley. I want to make money. I want to pay my bills. Because if that's all you focus on, that's all you're going to get. You will get whatever you focus on. Does that make sense? And your vision has to be so big, so attractive, that not only are you going to be chasing it, but the people that follow you will buy into your vision and chase it as well. Does that make sense? So I believe you need to have two whys. A why for you and your family and a why for your organization. See, people want to be a part of a cause, yes or no. People want to be a part of something bigger than themselves, yes or no. So you need to take your why, you need to build it, you need to expand on it, and you need to multiply it because that's how you're going to create a momentum like second to none. Are you guys with me so far? Very good. And just so you know, here's the other aspect of your why. This business is not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. Have any of us ever felt challenged in this business, yes or no? And so what I love about this business is truly a test. Everything you go through is a test. When people sign up and quit, that is a test. And so I will tell you, your greatest test will become your greatest testimony. And so here's what you have to accept right now today. The pain that's going to be involved with this business. You're going to struggle. You're going to get beat up. You're going to get knocked down. My mentor says, fall in love with the pain. Say, when we fall in love with the pain, because if you're experiencing some type of pain, that means you're growing and you're getting better. Say it with me, it's all about getting better. Now, when it comes to recruiting guys, we're going to talk to two groups of people. You know, you're going to have your warm market, which I truly believe you should spend 99.9% .9 of your time focusing on. And then, of course, you're going to have everybody else. We can also agree there's more people that you don't know than people you do know, yes or yes. And I'm going to show you at the end of our training how to talk to not just your best friend and your grandmother and everybody else. I'm going to show you how to expand your war market so you never run out of war market. So to start recruiting, we got to make a list. Say it with me, list. And on your list, you need to start off with 100 names. Now, for the people who are leaders in this room today, how many of you are launching new representatives into the business? Anybody in the room? Very good, four of us. We all need to step up and take ownership. Can we do that, yes or no? Okay, when I say with a new rep, I have to make a list on the spot of 30 names. I don't need phone numbers, just 30 names. But ultimately, my goal is to get them to 100. See, your list is like your gas tank. If we're going to drive from San Diego to my hometown of Miami, Florida, and all you have is a half a tank of gas, we can agree you're not making it past San Diego, right? So your list is the same exact thing. If you have a list of five, you're not going to even get qualified. So bottom line, we got to have a huge list. Sit with your people. Expand their list. Jog their memory. Think about where they go to work. You know, the church, people from church, people from the job, your neighbors. I go through my yearbook. My favorite resource is Facebook. Now, on your list, you want to focus on the whip list. Work ethic, right? Hunger. You're looking for people who are hungry for opportunity. You're looking for people with integrity and people who have personal power. That's, the, that's, that's my criteria of someone that could blow ACN up. And now with the list, the goal of the list, we're going to change it from a contact list to a hit list. Your goal is to hit every person on this list and knock them off the list as quickly as possible. Your war market's like vegetables. The longer it takes for you to get to them, the sooner they're going to rot. Does that make sense? And so you want to go through your list as quickly as possible, speed and exposure, you want to sort, not sell. We're not here to convince people to do ACN. Uh, my philosophy is a person convinced against your will is of the same opinion still. See, I shouldn't have to convince Joe to make residual income. I shouldn't have to convince him to change his quality of life. See, here's what I know. We're not here to motivate people. We're looking for people who are motivated. And so you're, the problem most of us have is we're here trying to beg people to do ACN. You just need to move on, sort as quickly as possible. Can we do that, yes or no? And it's not about what happens today or this week. See, I truly believe it takes a good two to three years to master the game. Some of you get caught up, well, how quick can I make a TCAB? How quick can I hit ETT and TC and RVP and SVP? It's not about how quick you hit. It's about how quick you master the business. Does that make sense? Now, guys, it's a business of numbers. It is a numbers game. Say with me, numbers. Numbers. Again, numbers. 
You want to go through the numbers as quickly as possible. Here's a few people who understood numbers. How many of us have ever heard of Thomas Edison? He failed 10,000 times before he figured out how to create the light bulb. What if, we, what if we quit after the first few times he failed? He didn't, and because he didn't, now we will remember him for as long as we're around. Yes or no? Abraham Lincoln, supposedly the greatest president this, this country's ever seen. Before he became the greatest president, he was the greatest failure. He failed dozens of times in office, trying to become vice president, congressman, failed in business, failed as a, an attorney, failed as a husband. But when it's all said and done, He's now known as the greatest president to ever become a president here in the USA. One of my favorite athletes is Michael Jordan. How many of us know Michael Jordan? <clears throat> now, this is, this is all about numbers. I'm going to read this to you real quick. One of the greatest athletes to ever play the game will go down in history forever, right? He says, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. Read this with me. I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. You will fail your way to the top of this company. Are you guys with me so far? Now, enough with the mindset, let's get right into the logistics. Can we do that? Let's talk about creating momentum. Next slide. Most important thing when it comes to recruiting and having home meetings is obviously we got to schedule a home meeting, a PBR. And what you want to do, here's how I set it up. I tell my new people, listen, your objective is to invite at least 30 people. See, in South Florida, it doesn't snow, but we have a lot of snowflakes. Here's what I mean. See, if you invite 30 people, only 15 show up. Why? Because they all flake out on you. Are you with me so far? See, I don't need everyone to show up. I just need the right people to show up. Because I know out of 15 that show up, we're enrolling minimum two, and as you improve in your skill set, maybe five, maybe ten, maybe more. But at least two will enroll, the rest will become customers, and that's how we knock out ETT. Now we set up two meetings. The first meeting is the emergency meeting, the second meeting is the fallback meeting. We do all this within 24 hours of each other. And so what I want everyone to do before this training is done is to book two home meetings for yourself and make a list of your newest IBOs who's enrolled in the last seven days, ten days, and make sure they're booked for a home meeting as well. Can we do it? Very good. Next slide. Now, when it comes to inviting people, it's all about enthusiasm. You got to be jacked up, fired up, out of control. You got to imagine like you just drank like 10 Red Bulls, 20 shots of espresso. Like you just lit your hair on fire and you're running around like crazy. Because here's what I will tell you. When you were fired up, everyone else is want to come see what, what's going on in your life. Does that make sense so far? And not only that, edification. See, a lot of us here are successful business owners outside of ACN, but you don't need to make it about you. In fact, my mentor always says, don't talk about the company. Talk about the leadership. Talk about your mentor. People want to meet a person. They don't want to meet a company. When you invite people, never beg. You got to be confident. You got to know what you got. Because here's my mindset. If you're needy and you're begging people to take a look at this opportunity, that means you're giving them the value. You're giving them the power. Understand, they don't have residual income. They don't have the ability to leverage the efforts of other people in 23 countries worldwide. Who has that opportunity? We do. Who needs who? They need us. And if you, if you come across that way, I promise you, people will be naturally drawn to your conversation. Mr. Larry Raskin always says this, people follow people with strength. It's not about what car you drive or what suit you wear or what your background is. It's all about your conviction and where you're going. Are you guys with me so far? You got to keep it simple. Talk to a lot of people, right, in a short window of time. Like it says right over here, talk to 100 people in one minute, not, a, not, not one person in 100 minutes. Does that make sense? You want to breeze right through it, knock out that list. Less is more. I'm going to break down some inviting stuff. Some of you guys are going to be a little like, whoa, what's going on here? Is this what they're doing in Miami? You're going to freak out in a few minutes, but it's going to be all good. Next slide. Know your role. Your job is to invite people. Not explain, not sell, not convince, but invite. It's our job to explain the opportunity. From there, your prospects will then decide whether to become a business owner or a customer. And here's an example. Who's here for the very first time? Good. Who invited you here today? <laughs> your upline, right? Who's doing all the talking and training right now? Uh, so is your upline working hard or working smart? Can you do what they're doing? What are they doing? Hopefully not texting, right? <laughs> and so guys, when it comes to re recruiting and presenting, same thing. Your job is just become a master inviter. Now, words you want to stay away from. The word business opportunity. Why? Because everybody in network marketing uses that, from the, mo the juice company to the legal company, all these crazy companies, the, the, the pill that cures ugliness, they all use the same lingo. I have this incredible business opportunity. It'll change your life forever. Instead of saying business opportunity, you say, I just got lucky. I just got a chance to work with an incredible individual. Got it so far? Okay? Stop saying the word meeting. Why? Meeting is boring. 
sounds like a two, three hour session. People who come from work, they don't want to go to a, another meeting. So instead of saying meeting, say event, a get together, a gathering. Don't say the word presentation. Why? It sounds too salesy. Instead of saying come to a presentation, come see the information. Don't say I just joined. Just say partnered up with. Don't say my upline. These are words you want to avoid. Now when it comes to inviting people, I use two approaches with my group. Now I know some of you guys have some awesome scripts and I believe that the convention is like a buffet table. Take what you like, leave what you don't like. Just because I show you this script, I know there's like a lot of people here who are system happy, where they hear one little thing, they make a change right away. Don't do that. Follow what your upline tells you to do because obviously it works for them and their organization. But this is what we're doing here in South Florida for a couple reasons. You know, I know there's some scripts I've seen that are like two pages long. You have to like have like a, a, a PhD to be able to read the scripts to invite people. See, in South Florida, most of us can't read. We have, we're like the worst educated uh, state in the entire country. So we had to really simplify everything, right? So here's how we invite people. Excuse me. <coughs> First thing we do, what are you doing tomorrow? Or whatever day you're gonna have your meeting. We don't invite them anywhere until we, we know they're available first. So what are you doing as an example, Monday evening at 8.30? Oh, I'm busy, okay, great. How about Wednesday at 6.30? We have two slots already lined up. If they're not available, here's what we say. Great, I'll call you back in a few days, something very important to talk to you about, click. Keep them wanting to know what you're talking about. Does that make sense? Don't say anything, what's the point? You can't even invite them. Don't send them your website. Keep them waiting for you, because you want to get them in front of the information. So what are you doing Monday at 8.30? I don't know, why? What are you doing at 8.30? You have time. Yeah, okay, great. Are you interested in making extra money? Well, what is it? Well, we need to get together for 30 minutes. That's how we invite people. Simple. Now, when it comes to business contacts, here's what we say. What are you doing tomorrow at 6 o'clock or whatever time? I need your opinion on something. It's business related. Well, what is it about? Well, we need to get together for 30 minutes. Say it with me. We need to get together for 30 minutes. <clears throat> That's it. And notice how I'm not asking, I'm not saying, can we get together? Can you please make time? No, 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 no. They need us. We don't need them. They need to clear their schedule. We need to get together for 30 minutes. Does that make sense? Now, they're going to ask you a million questions. What's it about? What do I have to do? Here's what you do next. You say, listen, it deals with technology and making money. That's why we have to meet so you can see it for yourself. Trust me, just come. But what is it about? Trust me, just come. What's it called? Trust me, just come. What's the website? Trust me, just come dot <laughs> com. But trust me, just come. What's your name? Trust me, just come. Say it with me. Trust me, just come. That's it, guys. Now, you're going to have some people who are annoying. They want to ask you a million questions, right? All the urchins, which is cool. I get it. Here's how you deal with all the people who ask too many questions. So you take it away from them. People want what they cannot have. So here's what I say. When you start asking me too many questions, I say, listen, do you want to make money? Yes or no? If not, I'll call somebody else. And usually, well, no, I want to make money. Okay, great. Monday, 8.30. I'll see you there. Do me a favor. Don't cancel on me. That's my confirmation call, by the way. We don't really do confirmation calls. Um, we just let them know straight up. Don't sell out. Don't cancel. I'll see you there. Does that make sense, guys? Very, very simple. Now, let me give you an example real quick. I know Matthew Lamontang did this kind of. He did a Canadian version. <clears throat> I'm going to do the U.S. version. Here's how some of you guys are inviting people. Hey, Joe, what are you doing on Monday at 8 o'clock? <clears throat> I don't know. Why? What's going on? Well, what's going on is a company called ACM has been around since 1993. Do business over 23 countries worldwide. Over half a billion dollars in business. They do TV, cell phone, internet, and energy. It's crazy. It's out of control. We go direct to the customers through word of mouth marketing. Eliminate all the middlemen. Save customers money. We get up 10% every single month. The residual income over and over and over again is out of control. You find 24, 8, 63, 64, 128. You have a team of 250 people. They all get customers. Make 5,800 another residual income. Cost 49 to get involved. It's crazy. You have VDT, ETL, TCS, You make all this freaking money. You have training on every single Saturday. It's crazy. You want to join? We call that fire hosing people. Just say no to fire hose. Does that make sense? Less is more. Now, guys, when it comes to setting up your home meeting, by the way, are, is everything okay? Am I doing okay? I'm like super nervous. You can't even tell, but I'm like over here like, Aah! it's crazy, son. It's crazy. I don't even know where I'm at right now. Checklist. There we go. Good, good, good. Dummy proof. You see these screens here? Very good. And so you want to have some stuff ready, such as your video. You want to have your presentation set up. You want to have color copies. I know some of you guys are, you know, little penny pictures here and there, but don't do black and white one through tens. That's just not cool. You want to have top gloss, high quality presentations. You want to understand that it's normal for most people not to show up. So when you have your home meeting, let's say this is your group over here, you invited 20 people and like three showed up because you didn't invite the right way, right? You don't want to go to your three people and say, you're the only ones who actually showed up. Everyone else sold me out. This business is so hard. Ugh, I don't even know if I can do this. Well, we're going to go ahead and start the presentation. <laughs> so here's how you're going to change the conversation. I'm glad you're here. You're the only ones that I wanted to be here and share this opportunity with. You guys are the most important people. Make them feel valuable. Does that make sense? You want to welcome your guests. 
You want to build up your presenter. You want to make sure you're the one passing out the paperwork. Okay, give them a pen so you can take notes from the very beginning. We're going to start with the DVD. Your job's simple. Guys, put your cell phones on silent. Keep your questions to the end. Stay in your seats. We're going to play a short two-hour video. Everyone laughs. Ha, ha, ha. You say, just kidding, just kidding. Five minutes. And push play. Sit down and watch the video. Don't do dishes. Don't take care of your kids. Watch the video, right? After the video comes up, you're going to introduce the speaker. I'm going to introduce you to a top leader here in the area, blowing the business up. So lucky to be working with them. Top executive. They're going to explain everything about the business. Help me bring up Mr. or Mrs. So and so. You sit down, and all you're going to do is start clapping and laughing the entire time. Take notes, right? What I used to do is take notes, and all I would write down is SVP, 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 SVP. Because my guests would see what I'd be doing. And they're like, oh, Max is real serious. He's taking notes. I'm going to take notes too. Get them engaged. Are you guys with me so far? Now after the presentation, here's, here's the problem most of us have. We think the presentation is going to enroll the people. See, my mindset is the presentation is nothing more than the information. The work begins as soon as the presentation is done. See, at the end of the presentation, don't just be like, okay, great, so um, uh, I'll see you guys Saturday. Or, oh, okay, great, what did you guys think about it? Oh, okay, awesome. So I guess we'll touch base. You're not closing business. My mindset is I don't work for free. Every presentation that gets done, I'm getting an IBO. I'm getting a customer or I'm getting referrals. My time is valuable, yes or no? Your time is valuable. Make sure you're focusing on results. And here's what I do at the end of the presentation. I let my prospects know, hey guys, and I learned this from Jennifer and Darren Dowd. Hey, I'm gonna blow this up with or without you. I'm gonna get rich with or without you. But here's an invitation before I bring everybody we know to the table, I'm giving you a chance to get in first. Because we partner up, we work together, we will dominate this area and create huge income. Are you in or are you out? Let me know. Either way, it doesn't matter because I have five other people who are ready to join. Let me know what you want to do. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. What do I got to do? Okay, here you go. Visa or MasterCard, right? <laughs> got that from Mac. That's, that's pretty funny. And so, yeah, what you also need to do is promote the next event. Here's what you don't want to do. Guys, we have an incredible event this Saturday. Um, it's going to be at 10 a.m. Let us know if you can come. It's going to be awesome. You think they're going to show up? No. They'll be like, well, when's the next one? Oh, we have it every single Saturday. And if you can't make it next Saturday, the following Saturday, no, in fact, here's the schedule for the next 10 years. Every single Saturday, 10 a.m. to 12.30, you just let me know on Facebook when you can make it. It's not happening. Here's how I promote my event. I'm not going to talk too much about promoting because that's Mr. Adam's topic. But when it comes to Saturday trance, say, listen, we have a huge event, exclusive invite only. We're flying in some of the top people in the entire company to share the information. People will be driving in from out of town to be there. People will be waiting in line to just get into the event. People will be paying money at the door to get in. It's an exclusive on invite only. I don't even know if I can get you in, but if you're serious, you let me know. I'll add you to the guest list, see if I can pull some strings, and I'll get back to you if I can get you in. Only if you're serious, you can be there. No, I can be there. Well, I'll get back to you. I don't even know if I can get you in. I'll see what I can do. I don't even know if you qualify. I don't even know if you qualify. <laughs> Make sure you, get, you provide everybody with the tools, the magazines, and DVDs. You want to do what's called toast prevention. We already know what happens with that. Mr. Major talked about that yesterday. You know, the negative spouse or, you know, knocking the husband out of the, bo the box or whatever. We can prevent all that. Just give a magazine and DVD. And my mindset is this. If that person gets kicked out of the box because their spouse says, boo, you don't want that person on your team anyways. You know what I mean? You want somebody with a backbone that can make a decision. You're not looking for followers. You're looking for what? Leaders. And if they can't make a decision, they'll never decide to go ETT or SEP. You're going to be a babysitter, babysitting these people. And guess what? You'll make babysitter wages. And I'll laugh at you. Next slide. Additional recruiting tools. How to deal with everybody outside of your warm market. Real simple. Everywhere you go, there's people. Open your mouth, talk to them. Now, don't do what I used to do. I'd be in the hallway of my school because I really took that whole idea, talk to a lot of people, make a lot of money. I took it literally. I'd be waiting in my hallway of, of school. Oh, there's a person. Do you want to make extra money? Oh, another one. Do you want to make extra money? And I did that for like a year. Everyone in my school called me the telephone guy. Run, right? And it's so funny because even though I had no system, I still hit TC in 11 months because I really, it really does work. Talk to a lot of people, you eventually get there, right? But here's what I did. Here's what I learned to do. Form prospects. F-O-R-M, family, occupation, recreation, money. Make friends with people. Get to know what's important to them, and then you can tailor the conversation to fit that prospect's needs. ACN is the solution to all people's problems, in my opinion. Now, Facebook. Who here uses Facebook? If you don't have a Facebook, wake up. In fact, don't wake up. Don't use Facebook. I'll use Facebook and recruit all your people, all right? That is a major tool. Everyone's on Facebook. Billions of people are on Facebook. Over 120 million log in per day. Now, when it comes to Facebook, I see a lot of you guys spamming your page. Go to my store. Crazy discounts on cell phones. 
I can save you money on your TV service. Blah, 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 blah. And the problem with that is people are going to start looking at you as a spammer, and they're going to avoid your page and not pay you any attention. The purpose of having a Facebook page is not to sell, but to display your lifestyle, your ambitions. Your whole objective is to have people, your friends on your Facebook, your team. Your whole objective is to have them ask you questions about what you're doing. And that's another way of forming your prospects that you may not even have a personal relationship with. So instead of creating a sales page, create a lifestyle page. In fact, while you're here, take pictures of the leaders with you and your mentor. In fact, while you're here right now, another tool you can do is check into places that display your lifestyle. What do I mean by that? If you go to a luxury car a dealership, check in. Planning my next purchase. Bugatti. Bam. I guarantee you, your friends are like, bro, what are you doing? What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, man, I got this, this incredible opportunity, this chance that I'm working with this multi-millionaire that's expanding the business and I'm going to have a chance to really make some serious income. Let's exchange it for, I'll give you a call, just give me your phone number. Bam, conversation, that's the whole point. Does that make sense so far? So check in, don't check in if you go to like a Honda dealership, that's not lifestyle, okay? <clears throat> Referrals, every no, no's a yes. And I'm going to teach you something, guys, that I always do. When someone says, you know, whether they come to a presentation or not, if they're not interested, I always ask them who they know. Oh, I'm not interested in making extra money, I'm good. No problem. Who do you know that's smart and intelligent that would be open to making a few extra grand a month on the side without interfering with their current schedule? Oh, I know this person. Okay, great. Let me get his name and phone number. I'll give him a call saying you referred me. Get their phone number. But then here's what I do. I call that referral named Tom. Hey, Tom, you referred to me by Mr. Mike Kane. He says you're sharp, open-minded, and looking to generate additional income. Is that true? Yes. Awesome. I'll set an appointment. But before I even meet that person, here's what I'm doing, the same phone call. Hey, Tom, by the way, I'm expanding my company in the area. I'm looking for two, three other sharp people. Is there anyone that you trust and feel comfortable referring to me? It'd be greatly appreciated. So before I even meet that person, I'm already taprooting them. I call it taproot the taproot. And before I meet with that original person, I'll meet with three or four other people that came through referrals. So when I meet that first person, I say, hey, listen, you already have five people getting involved. What are you going to do? What do you mean? Yeah, you remember Tom? He referred me to this person, this person. Before you know it, bam, momentum. Next slide. Timing versus talent. Spend one minute with 100 people, not 100 minutes with one person. I will tell you guys, it's not about you know, saying the right things and being the best presenter, being the best dress. You know, I'm going to be honest, guys. You know, most of my group, they're, they're, you know, we're, we're, we're awesome people. We, we got incredible work ethic, but most of us don't come from extraordinary backgrounds. I wish I played professional football. I, I'd be a lot cooler, but I'm not. <laughs> but here's what we did have, a desire to win. You know, a lot of people said that, we, you know, you, a lot of people told me and a lot of my team, you can't do this. You're not good enough. You don't have the experience. You don't have the right contacts. But you know what? I love what Greg Provenzano said when I first joined AC in 2004 on the DVD. He says, it doesn't matter what you've done up until now. All that matters is what you're going to do from this point forward. AC never asked me for a resume, never asked me for, you know, my credentials. All they said is, are you want to have integrity? Are you want to work hard and help other people? And if so, you can have it all. And that's what I love about ACN, guys. You don't have to worry about being perfect. Just be passionate about where you're going. And be patient with your people. Not everyone's going to be a superstar. It might take some, that took me seven years to get on the stage. It's crazy, right? But is it worth it, yes or no? And another story I want to leave you with, you know, is my little sister, who's currently like the top two regional director in the entire world at age 23. She used to be a tutor, teaching five-year-old kids how to add and subtract. Another $10 an hour wage worker but now super successful in ACN. You know, it's so funny, it took her three years to come to a presentation. She came to a presentation after I hit RVP. I said, Maddie, you're my sister. The biggest day of my life is this day. I'm getting promoted. This is what I've been working my entire life for. Can you please just show up? She showed up and she sat outside the entire session until my promotion. And when my promotion came, it happened, she actually went inside the room. And it's so crazy because after that promotion, she was a little bit open-minded. So it took me three years just to get her to a room, and another few days to finally get into a presentation, she finally enrolled. And so here's the point. It took me three years to get her in, but now look at her, number two in the world, 23 years of age, young professional female, blowing this business up. So it's not about talent, it's about timing. The fortune's in the follow-up and the fortune's in the follow-through. And so here's the reality in this business, you got to work hard. you got to make a decision today that we're going to blow this thing up. How many of us here are committed to having a better 2012 than 2011? Anybody in this room? 
I want to know, think about this. We got the launch of Comcast and all these cable companies. Energy coming to a market near you in the next 12 to 24 months. We got international expansion. Right now we have a window of opportunity that has never happened in 19 year history of this company. The question isn't, is it going to work? Is it going to happen? It's already a done deal. The question is, what are you going to do with this deal? Are you in it to win it? Because if you don't, somebody else will. You need to make your mind up today that in 2012, you're walking the stage as a senior vice president, as a regional vice president, as a regional director. Make your mind up today. Your 2012 does not begin in January or February or when you wake up from your vacation. Your 2012 begins today with the decision you make. My mentor says the choices you make, make you. And understand that SVP is not for the chosen few, but for the few who choose. Today you can choose to change your family tree, your future generations forever. Take a stand for what you believe in and take a stand for what you feel you are, you're worth for you and your family. Because if it's not now, then when? If it's not you, then who? And if it's not ACN, then what? Can we go out there and show these owners how much we appreciate them and blow this thing up?